What is going on, everybody? You are watching Real Life with Duke White. I am here with the man, Pastor Tim Ritter. <laughs> Do you want me to call you Pastor Tim Ritter or just Tim Ritter? Just, Pastor just, Tim works fine, right, too. Yeah. I've been All called right. a lot of things over the years. <laughs> Most like, were worse than that. All right, so uh, <laughs> Pastor Tim is, is here, and uh, this is his facility, his family's facility, and they've been so gracious to allow us to do our show here, uh, which is Real Life with Duke White. But it's the family fun experience, and as you see, we have like a game show set up right here, but uh, we're going to be talking to Pastor Tim today, uh, today about his vision, the family vision, how it got started, uh, where it's going, and, and, and ultimately, we want this to be an invitation to you to come and experience the family fun experience. Exactly. Uh, the one thing I notice is that you spell experience with an X. Yeah, we spell it correctly, yes. You spell it correctly. <laughs> experience. There's no E. It's not experience. <laughs> like knife. I mean, yes. you're a revolutionary, man. <laughs> you're a revolutionary. Knife. There's no K. Kids from now. No, I'm getting in trouble for that. <laughs> kids, kids, kids ends with a Z. That's yeah, the way yeah. I spell that. Kids too, so. with a Z. All right. Yeah. So uh, obviously you have a heart for families. <laughs> and uh, we've talked several times and you have made it very well known that, that, that there's some things that bother you about family interaction right now. Let's talk a little bit about that. What are you seeing out there with family interaction, you know, kind of as not communicating? Yeah. I mean, part of my background's in counseling and psychology, part of my background's in ministry, yeah. worked with families in both those aspects of the year. So there's certainly all the same struggles that have always existed for families and children and relationships <laughs> right. and all the above. And just, you know, new challenges seem to appear every year for all these kind of things, dealing with just issues that didn't exist a year yeah, ago yeah, or yeah. three years ago or five years ago. And so there's always this challenge to the families. And what we've seen over decades, and we're not the only ones that observe this, is just a breakdown in family structure. And even more than a breakdown in that, because we see family as being a core of community, a core of you know, culture and society. So that's, it's really the foundational element of all that. But I think it even goes to a level of being an attack on families. Right. And we see that in a lot of different ways nowadays, so sort of the destruction of the nuclear family. Um, but the same side of it, family is where we get a lot of our strength, a lot of our development and everything else out of. So is it a perfect nuclear family that we imagine from a very short period of time in history? Because <laughs> that didn't exist 100, yeah, 200 yeah, yeah. years ago the same way as it does you know, in the 50s or 60s or now. So there's a, there's a thing about family that, that can build strength in, right. in every member of the family. And so I think that's what we try to honor. And when we invite us in as family, we don't say family has to be a certain size, certain shape, certain color, certain anything else. It's just family. Right. And so a lot of our seating is couch seating in here. And so we just sort of say, whoever's sitting on the couch with you, that's your family tonight. It might be <laughs> your group of friends and you're all singles, but you act like family. Yeah, and you know, I, I noticed that even with social media, that there's just this need to connect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think when people don't have that connection, when people aren't getting that that need met to 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 feel like they have community, right. you know, uh, that person begins to feel isolated, and and you know, and and that, that always concerns me. That's why I've loved uh, certain television shows like Family Feud. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then there's Wheel of Fortune. You know, any any type of thing that that brings people together has always kind of had a, a special place in my heart, which brings me to you with the FFX Theater. So you guys decided to, you know, have this theater and, and create game shows that gets the kids off of their cell phones and right, things like that. Right, right. And that, that really wasn't our original plan. Right. Um, the game show thing sort of just was what evolved out of launching right at the beginning of COVID. Because the original yeah. thing was we were a destination theater. We created a show. We named Family Fun Experience. It was actually the name of our show. A story about a family. And the first part of the show, you know, they're having all the normal squabbles and strife and stuff you have in a family. And this family also likes to play games. And so the unique element of the show is that they would involve people in the audience in some games. They would involve sometimes the whole audience. They would just treat them as neighbors, friends, whatever as part of those games, and that would become part of the story. So a lot like in a musical, where a song they break into tells part of the story, in our version, a game tells part of the story. And this family, about halfway through the show, would decide that, you know, we just sort of had it with each other, we need a vacation. And of course, where do they go? They go to Virginia Beach, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> and in the second half, they're at the beach, 
but they're still the same family. They realize we still have to deal with each other. We still have to all these same struggles just because we went somewhere and have new surroundings and it's a fun place doesn't mean yeah, yeah. that we don't still have to deal with these things. And they start through those games again, learning to sort of face some of those things. And the goal of that show was A, to have a fun experience that a family could enjoy together. And they could do something together in the show and not just sit and watch the yeah. show. And that, that's true for everything we've done since then. But the other goal was that the family members would identify with somebody in that cast. They yeah. say, oh, I've done, even if you're the dad, like I've said some things just like what that mom just said. Man, my kids gave me the same eye roll or whatever, you know. And you could identify those things just to say, there's a reason why you're a dad, why you're a mom, why you're a kid, you're a teenager. Whatever your role is in the family, you're going through that piece and there's there's something that is by design with that that we yeah. need to go through that developmentally and i think that, that sometimes we over we we miss the fact that adventure is important to a family yes. laughter is important to family mm -hmm. you know what i mean uh and so like when my kids they, they when things are getting tense and they they give me the eye roll then i just you know give them a clothesline or <laughs> A drop kick, you know what I mean? And then everything is friendly again. And then we try I mean? to find more positive solutions, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, this is really unique. You brought in games. I'm like, huh, who would have thunk it? Do you struggle with leading your family in regular Bible devotions? I sure did. My wife and I have seven kids, aged 12 and younger, and I found it tough to find the time and energy. So I built an app called Actors Bible to help me disciple my family through role-playing the Bible in an interactive, participational, exciting, and discovery-based way. It includes the entire Bible as a script, broken up into 62 acts, 833 scenes. It scrolls as a teleprompter with 360-degree visuals of the Holy Lands where the stories took place and epic soundtracks. My family casts parts, listens to the audio drama, and then launches the teleprompter which spoon-feeds us our lines. We screen share it to our living room TV and the Bible comes to life each and every time in our home. At the end of every scene, the software asked each casted player what they learned about God and the main characters, as well as what they will commit to obeying and or changing, thus directly applying the story to their lives as the Holy Spirit reveals. We get points and title increases as we progress, with the goal of going through the entire Bible in one to three years. This really helps us stay consistent. I have seen my whole family transformed, especially myself, with just 15 minutes a day. We also do this in concert with other families too, all individually going through Actors Bible scene by scene for family devotions. All the families then gather together, cast parts, rehearse a few times, and then present the multiple scenes back to back for an evangelistic outreach performance for our communities. Actors Bible will transform your family Bible time and help you reach your community too. Try it for free today. You know what I mean? You don't, yeah. you don't have to turn it into a wrestling match. It's just a nice game. But I do believe that uh, sometimes as adults, maybe, you know, it's possible that we don't consider our kids' stress levels, mm -hmm. which when they act out, I'm trying to, I'm looking at you for, to, to tell me what I'm veering off because I know you got, oh, the, no, that's... you got the professional side, but this is just an assumption. Like, most parents do approach parenting from a place of <laughs> almost victimization in a way like okay and so we're not considering what the kids are going through mm -hmm. and now we have a, a stressed out house right because no one's considering anything the, the kids don't even understand what the parents are going through and the parents are, are thinking that they're going through something that's more serious than what the kids go right. through and taking a break and taking a vacation and coming to a place where you can just kind of be with each other mm -hmm. is that the opportunity to really to, to to really become that when that family gels yeah we we want to just provide that environment where the family's going to see each other a little bit differently see where they're at right now because we have it all the time where a parent and a kid look at each other it's like how did you know that or what you know <laughs> where did you get that from and it, literally every night we do a show, that's that's what we see happen in the audience. But what I know is that those parents and those kids are connecting in different ways. Those kids are seeing those parents a little differently because they're a little more mature. Yeah. And they, they evolve their idea of who their parents are. But then the parents see the kids and realize it's like, oh, my daughter's not three anymore. She's eight. And, oh, she's got some some things that are going on in her that I don't I, I saw come out here. But then they can 
figure that out. And they figured out that spending some time together, doing something together yeah. is where you begin to see those things. Now, the fun you mentioned is important because, yeah, everybody's stressed. The stress levels in kids now oh. are sort of off the charts because back in our day, it was like, stress, it was right. like you were stressed about anything. It was like, you're outside. Don't come right. back in until it's dark or the street lights come it's on or whatever, time. right? I like or sit back in that or day. Like you and your brother, we're going to lock you in the room back here and hopefully both of you come out alive. If one of you comes out alive, that's fine. No, the outside you know, that was... idea was better. <laughs> that was always the better idea. Yeah, outside was better. Drink yeah. out of the hose and whatever. But you still have the same stress. But the kids today, A, it's not safe to always just kick them outside and run roam free around the neighborhood. Right. They, they're just through social media, stuff that's on just the voluminous amount of media and stuff that's on TV and everything else. They it's are exposed constant, to so many yeah. things that force them to grow up so much faster. Right. You know, as a teenager, do you know any teenager that drank coffee? No. Which is, uh, we all knew that that was an adult drink. Like, there was, yeah. that was an adult drink. And there was no drink, fancy yeah. coffees. It was just, coffee is an adult drink. You don't even, as a young adult, probably even care about the coffee anymore, no. right? And now it's like you got seven and eight-year-olds. It's like, oh, I want a mocha frappuccino, whatever. It's, it's like. It's so weird because you just didn't see that. You, you mm -hmm. didn't think about it. You didn't, you didn't, you know. But, but again, I think that uh, a lot of young people, um, there's this competition where it's like, not only am I going to be a better parent than my parents. Um, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my kid more. I'm gonna do more. And I don't think they, when, when you come from a place where America kind of turns us into workhorses, right. where it's all about how much we do, but we've never really connected. But it's like, how much right. did I give you? How much did I do this? But it's like, that's why a lot of parents are shocked when they hear their kids say things like, "You don't know me," right. And you're like, wait, but I, I bought you this. I bought you this. I bought you that. It's like, mm -hmm. you don't know me. That Those are two different conversations. You're not spending that, that, that quality, quality time. time together. Yeah, exactly. Because I notice, um, even when we've talked offline, I'll, I'll come up with an idea. And it's always and you always bring it back to how is it going to impact the family. Right. And I've always noticed that about you. And I'm like, man, you're really focused on that idea. Because even when I'm trying to, you know, get people to come here it's like hey don't lose the focus that it's about the family experience and i i right. love when i get reminded of that because uh that is what's so important families coming here laughing together families coming mm -hmm. here uh you even have something where you, if someone's a little shy you know what i mean you have a way to work around that and mm -hmm. include that like you guys you you guys, I'm telling you right now, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, the amount of laughter that happens here that I got to see myself was really cool. Uh, people participating. Uh, you have a pirate show mm -hmm. that is very interactive, high spirits, right. uh, very interactive. Uh, but so do you do all the writing? Uh, a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we do borrow some things from different places when we do like a family friendly murder mystery or whatever. We, we adapt some things. Murder mystery. Everything's here, guys. We do all kinds of fun. Yeah. Show, but that you got sort of right to the crux of why we called it what we did, because we played with a lot of different ways of doing it. But the last word is experience. But what was important to us is that you have a shared experience together. That's, yeah. that's sort of, a, you know, I don't want to just sit and watch something. You want to do something together. It should be a shared experience. We did that together. And families do a lot of things together, but it's like if you mini golf, you know, you're doing something together and that, that's a little more interactive. You yeah. go to a movie together, it's like you sat and watched it turn to a screen the whole time <laughs> and maybe you talk about it for five minutes afterwards right. or whatever. You go and do something, the only other things families tend to do together, I mean, other than some sporting kind of things is our kid had a recital, our kid had a thing and you're watching them yeah, perform right. and you're yay and, you know flowers or dinner or whatever you do. It's like, there's all these little things we do together, but we don't spend time really interacting until things get serious. No, and that's why the fun is important. Yeah. Because it's important for the family. That fun lets you open up, lets you get to know each other, lets you build that strength and resiliency in the family so that when you do have the hard times, you've I'm got that connection now, and that I've glue actually, already there. No, I, I, and when I say it, it's so, uh, oh, that's such a good word, glue, the glue that's there. Because, uh, when I hear people talk, even as individuals, I hear things like, oh, this tore me up, uh, or, or even divorce, it tears my family apart. Right. It, it's on this, and so these memories become this fabric, this glue that really can make people say, hey, I want to give it another shot. Let's give it another year. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to throw these memories away. I don't want these uh, to be nothing. And I, and again, you know, in our, in our attempt to be successful, and create stability to our families. 
we can often forget that one of those main ingredients, that glue, is that we have these experiences that create that. Right. Uh, because when you, if, if, you're, if it's just work and come home, work and come home, school, work and come home, school, work and come home, mm-hmm. you know, that, that becomes routine. And you're not really experiencing anything new. And, and, uh, and so we have this segment that we do. It's called Vacay and VA. Uh, and this is absolutely one of the reasons why you want to vacay and VA and come to Virginia. Uh, wherever you see this at, uh, whether you see it on the Internet, whether you see it on television, uh, we want you guys to come and see the theater, FFX Theater on 16th Street here in Virginia Beach. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Got a message to you from Current FM. Current FM has good news. The FCC has approved our application to triple our radio signal. We get to go up in power. We've been praying for this for so long, but we can't do this without your help. We are asking you to help fund this power increase as we'll need to buy a bigger transmitter and antenna. The price for these items alone will be approximately $75,000. Can you help us reach the amount needed so we can quickly get the power increase up and going? You can easily donate securely online at CurrentFM.com. You can also send in a check to Current FM, 3500 Virginia Beach Boulevard, Suite 201, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23452. We are nonprofit and tax deductible. It's because of your prayers that we received favor from the FCC, and we can't thank you enough for those prayers and for your financial support through the years. Help Current FM in reaching more people and seeing more lives changed in the years ahead. What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Duke White. We're here with t- uh, Pastor Tim Ritter from the FFX Theater. We're just trying to share with you guys uh, about the Family Fun Experience. Now, what's one, one of the things that's cool about the, out of all the many things that's cool about this theater, is this isn't just your idea. You guys came up with this as a family. Yeah. As a family. You created a theater for family Mm -hmm. as a family. Yeah, a long time before we were in Virginia Beach, yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, I do have to, you know, ask, what is that like (laughs) working with your family? Like, you know, like... Yeah, um, I mean, you know that as much as I do as far as there's some unique challenges every family business. In my situation, I think about jumping off a bridge, but... (laughs) Yeah, well, like... Here's a great example. We have a family down the street that there was this big fire down at the ocean front a couple right, nights ago. Right. And there's a pancake house that existed for 42 years. There's a, a seafood restaurant that existed for 40 years. Now, those actually existed even before that, but those families took that over and run those things for 40 years. And I saw a news article this morning that the couple that was running it, they'd Closed about two that day. They were already at home when the whole thing broke out. They had just put in new stuff, and they were talking about all the investments and all the years. They they don't miss any days. They are always there every day for that many decades. You know, maybe in the off season they take a vacation, but day after day after day, and they're like, we can't go there today. That's their family is based around. We serve people. We we bring them. There's a yeah. line out the door most mornings to go into that restaurant. Because that family loves serving and, and reaching the community that way. And now that place is gone. It's, it's tearing them up. Not just because their business is gone, but because it's like that's what their family was that's about. What, family. what, what do we do now? And how do we, how do we engage and, and do things? And I, I'm sure something good's going to come out of all that. Right, but, right. but you see that, that way that strikes a family. That's, that's very poignant. Um, for us... Um, haven't been involved in ministry in the past. You know, our kids got involved in the, the church and things like that. Angie and I have done a couple different things, and frequently we've done some businesses or different things that work together. Hi, this is, uh, I'm Colonel David Gimona, and welcome to uh, our set on Frontline. Frontline, and it was part of Battle Ready Ministries. And so what we're envisioning is the Lord gave us a, a word to prepare the church and warn the world. So. We're doing that through a lot of different media. Our books are national bestsellers. The first one to my left, your right, is The Military Guide to Armageddon. And uh, it's all about preparing us to be battle ready for the things, the events happening in the world today. 
And so it's a, it goes through all the things that we need to do to be spiritually ready, physically ready, mentally, emotionally ready. And then the other book uh, to the right is The Military Guide to Disarming Deception. Talk about all the deceptions in the world today and how to navigate them. And we have a third book coming out. It's through Chosen Books, Baker Publishing Group. And it's called Your... Um, basically, it's about purpose in life. And your mission and God's army is the, is the title of that. And uh, behind me, as you see, is Frontline. That's our show. And we have 30 national guests this week, including Robert Jeffress. We have the cast from The Chosen. We just interviewed David R. White and Brian Bosworth on Revelation Road and many, many, many others throughout the week. So we're excited about that. And so we're just bringing the gospel through the media through so many different venues. And that's basically the gist of what we're doing. What's going on, everybody? My name is Ezekiel White, and I wanted to tell you guys about this awesome event that's coming up, guys. It's an awesome event at the Chartway Arena, Norfolk, VA. Guess what? We're going to have three amazing artists. We're going to have Phil Wickham. Then we're going to have Brandon Lake. And then we're going to add KB. So come out, enjoy the amazing music, enjoy celebrating what Christ has done with us. Um, Current FM is also going to be there, so you guys are going to be able to get information about the awesome uh, radio station um, and how to support them and things like that. But the important thing is, is that you guys come out and get your tickets and enjoy some awesome music, laughter from all different ages, from brothers and sisters in Christ, just in a crowd, just enjoying each other and just praising God, okay? So please, guys, go to the Chartway Arena, get your amazing tickets, um, and you can do it online, too. So if you guys want further information, you can go on their website, Phil Wickham, you can go on KB, and you can go on Brandon Lake website, and it, it, you can order tickets there. So please, guys, come out and enjoy this amazing event. Peace out. All right, we are back. We're here with Pastor Tim Ritter of the FFX Theater, and we're just t talking to you guys about some of the wonderful things that they have going on and why you need to come and experience the family fun experience. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was uh, the, the website where mm -hmm. people can actually pick their seatings. Right. Explain that a little bit, how that actually goes. He's like, well, you just did do quite this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to, go to say that you did fine. <laughs> yeah. um, so... <laughs> We've had to change this a number of times over the years, but we've got some very unique seating with a lot of the couch seating you might have seen in that commercial. Yeah. Um, we've got other seating in here too, and so it doesn't work well for a family to just do like a general admission thing. It's just come in and find a seat and grab a seat. It's it's hard to harder to do that, and so we use a ticketing platform a lot like if you go to the movie theater, if you're picking out airline seats, and you sort of see the map of our our seating and you say, hey, we want to sit on this couch or we want to sit in the seats over here and you click on the little dots and get your tickets to the show and then you know right where you're sitting. Yeah, and, and the website is easy to na navigate through. Uh, there's a calendar there with all the different shows up there. So it's, you, you guys have done mm -hmm. a great job uh, showing how. But the really cool thing, what I love about the website the most is that when you find what you are looking for, you can actually share it Right on the Facebook or oh, right on can. the social yeah. media. Uh, mm -hmm. So you guys can actually tell other people about the Family Fun Experience while you're actually getting your tickets and bring other families in. Uh, and so I want to encourage as many family groups out there, get connected, find out uh, when the next showing is for one of the shows and uh, picture. But the one, I do got to ask you about this one particular show because I just love saying it, but it's Giggle Mill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love saying because I'm a tough guy, and so tough guys don't say giggle all the time, and it makes me smile when I... I can't say giggle without smiling. But, yeah. but what's Giggle Mill about? So um, there's an element to all of our shows with our cast or even with the game shows that's a little bit like improv and stuff right. like that. And um, gentleman Phil Philip Jacobson, uh, locally here, has taught improv, has done things for years with a lot of different things, and we'd worked together on a couple little things. And we got talking about this, and Giggle Mill actually came from a troupe he was part of back in Philadelphia, gotcha. way back. And 
that had had fallen out of use, and we said, well, let's let's bring back that name. That that seemed like a fun name that that fit what we were trying to do. So it's basically a show that's similar to Whose Line Is It Anyway, where we're playing these improv games. But again, we make it much more interactive. Whose Line? They don't usually bring audience members on stage right. very often, but we have some games they bring audience members in. All the games have contributions from the audience, and we have a troupe of trained improv people that that create that show. It is a fun show, but that's that's the one where we know sort of the games that are going to play, but we have no idea what's going to happen with anything in that show. All that we know is it's going to stay clean. We, we make sure that, that it's a very clean show. We do that with all of our shows. Even if couples date night game show, it's, still, it's still a clean show to come enjoy. Oh, that's a no point kids. that we want to definitely make is that, guys, this is called family fun experience. So this is definitely an environment where, uh, you know, you, you, you're going to have the clean comedy, clean music. Uh, so, you know, just know what to expect. This is a place where, where families are welcome. You know what I mean? And so, you know, mm -hmm. you, and, and, and listen, if you think you can just tell him that you want to rent the place and it's going to be clean and then you do the, he will cut the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had to do that too often. But yeah, no, I mean, no, he's that people guy. try to push the envelope. Yeah, sometimes. You know, because I know they're like, oh, what do you, we've, we're on stage now. You're not going to do it now. It's like, no, there's a lot. Of, but you know what? I know that. I know that. Uh, we want to get the big hook from the Gong Show, so we can just kind of don't. <laughs> No, I, one of the scariest things I think I've ever seen was uh, I don't know how these kids can do it, like with the, the Apollo and America's Got Talent and all mm -hmm. that stuff. It's like to, to just sit there and perform and be judged. That's that's creepy, yeah. you know. But but the, the, that's still more of an individual type show. But when you see families doing things together, I think that's one mm -hmm. of the reasons why that shows that promote family are doing so well because it's something that people want. The thing is, is that you don't normally find that in town, outside of like a church or a, a skating or bowling or you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But but, but and I think that what you're doing is so amazing because uh, I remember how awesome it was to just sit around and play Monopoly with my family right. or Uno and things like that. And you guys have taken it to another yeah. notch. And, and there's a lot of other cool things in the area that, that fit some of that vibe as well. Because, like, we've done things with Hunt Club Farm, great family environment, a lot of cool. We interact with goats and birds, all kinds of fun stuff, right? Horses, that's a lot of fun. I fly right down the street. Uh, the Game On Gaming Center over in Kempsville. There's, there's a lot. And I know I'm leaving a whole bunch out of it. I started right. to listen. I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's a whole bunch of ones I'm going to leave so, out so here. You didn't say my name. You there's a, there's a lot of cool things to do as a family down here. Um, and, and some of them have different degrees of interactivity, right. but our focus is on the family connecting. And if it's a couple coming or whatever it is, that's, that's who we're, you know, we're, we're building into them. Yeah. It's not a goal just, we're going to show you the show, you enjoy it if you enjoy it. We're trying to build into them. It's much more important for us what happens out in the seats than yeah. what happens on stage. Now, I do have to let this point be known that they are a nonprofit. Yes. Uh, so being a nonprofit means that you can support and send donations in to help them, uh, you know, to, to function and come up with more creative ideas and concepts that empower more families. Uh, so that is very, very important that you guys support. Uh, you'll be hearing more from, from Pastor Tim and, and, of course, myself because I'm always running my mouth about something. But you do uh, theater rentals, uh, mm -hmm. and so we had a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful uh, event. It was the Dinner and a Movement that was mm -hmm. here. Uh, we've also had uh, Lee Harden. Did you do comedy shows that were here? Move Clean in. comedy. Uh, and then... Uh, and Dinner the, Movement was a film screening. Did, did, we've done some film screening yep, and film, film festivals. Film so we've done a festivals. good number of those. Yep. And, and now we have another film coming up called Amen and It Is So. Mm -hmm. I said Amen. I sound a real country. But it's called Amen and It Is So. Check this out. Uh, when it took care of your business today, huh? Well, someone had to do it. She came to me the other day talking about she going to her divorce lawyer. Divorce lawyer? Man, hey, whatever. She come in with some papers, dog. I'm telling you, I'm signing. That's it. London Bridge is falling down. London? Hello? Uh, yes. So you gonna? <laughs> no, I'm serious. You're gonna ignore the questions. Hey, Josh, uh, let me ask you a question, man. Yeah, shoot. How do you know 
when it's the right time to get married. Even in the midst of this situation, Brother Joshua, I hear the Lord saying, and I know that you've been strong for your wife, but in this season, God wants you to be stronger. Stronger for your wife. And a fair. Yes. So, how long you been married? Man, I'm telling you right now. You do not want to get involved with this one right here. Everything you want, everything you need, I go to work so you can have that. So what, working now is a sin? Look at Mr. Harrison. Ah, this is your lucky day. I'm Mr. Harrison. Presidential. <laughs> Live interactive family friendly shows. Welcome to Family Fun Experience Theater. What can you expect? Well, game shows, family comedy, swashbuckling farces, holiday extravaganzas, birthday parties, plus superheroes, sci fi, and musical special. Expect something new and fun every week year round. Relaxing, comfortable couch seating with views overlooking the Virginia Beach Oceanfront with plenty of fun snacks and drinks to enjoy. FFX's unique brand of family friendly fun has the whole audience playing along from kids and teens to grandma and gramps. No kids? No problem. Whatever your age, our middle name is F-U-N. So what are you waiting for? Head over to FFXShow.org and get your tickets right now. 